In this video, I want to talk about FileMaker's free starter solution called Content Management. Now once again, I've had the opportunity to interview FileMaker's Nicholas Hunter about some of the design philosophies and ideas that went into designing this starter solution. Now to be clear, I can't cover every single aspect of this starter solution, but we're going to jump through and cover a number of the functional parts of this solution and some of the under the hood aspects. So let's dive in. First off, the content management solution is a solution with two tables. The two tables are content management, which are going to contain the actual content itself. One record represents one document. And the other table will contain related notes. Now if I take a look at the relationship here, and I go ahead and zoom in, you can see right here that it's a one-to-many relationship. That means that there's going to be one image or one document over here in content management, but you may have one or more related notes. Now the ID field that's running this relationship is actually a serial number that's set up in the content management solution on this side over here. So let's take a quick look at the functionality of this content management database. First off, we have the main container right here. We can drag and drop in here. And we notice right off that after I drag and drop the photo right here, additional data about the photograph becomes visible right here. Now how did this happen? Well, we'll get to that in just a minute. Now I'm going to create another new record. And I'm going to say, here's a PDF right here. And I'm going to drag and drop that on there. And I'm going to notice that this PDF is interactive. So I can actually flip through the PDF. This is a PDF on naming conventions. And so that looks pretty good. And let's create another new record. Here's another PDF on FileMaker Security Guide here. That's an interactive document, once again. That's pretty interesting. Now notice as I flip to different types of records, this section here does different things. That's pretty slick. Now let me create another new record right here. And I'm going to drag and drop uh, a media element on here. This is a MP3 track we downloaded off the internet. And notice that I can play the music here. And this music plays right here, no problem. And lastly, I can drag and drop a Word document on here. And I get just a generic document right here. So there's no interactivity with this at all. So how does all this work? So first off, I'm going to drop into layout mode. I'm going to move my inspector over here a little bit. In fact, I'm going to move it right here to the edge. I'm going to make this as big as I can. In fact, I'm going to move this over here and I want to show you something. First off, is that as we put different documents on here, we were not switching layouts. We actually drag and dropped into a single container field. But then FileMaker determined the kind of document we were looking at. There's a git function called git container attribute. And this allows us to extract all sorts of information about what's in the container itself. We can determine if we have an mp3 file, we can determine if it's a movie file, if it's some sort of generic word file, or if we actually have an image file with metadata in there. Now for those of you who don't understand, metadata is hidden bits of data that are actually inside a file that we can access. So for example, in an mp3 audio file, everyone's used to seeing the name of the file, additional information about the length of the file, the composer of the file, the artist, things like that. A lot of that information is actually stored as metadata within the file itself. And FileMaker has the ability, using git container attribute, to dig down inside that document to extract those attributes out. When we previously talked about the contact starter solution, we introduced the idea of a single panel slide object. And that single panel object, that's the technique that's being used here in this starter solution. Not only that, in order to overlap these slide panels and to make them useful, each slide panel is a different length here with a note on the side, almost like a tab to show you where the panel is so you can grab it and work on it. Here's a panel right here that's visible when you have an audio file. Here's a panel right here that's visible with an image. Now to actually see this, we have to move it off screen or I can actually delete the other ones here. And now we're left with actually the base default container that you see on the layout before any values are dragged and dropped in here. 
Then this one right here is the one that you see that effectively turns on when FileMaker detects that you actually have an image. It's really slick. Now I can double click right here and you can see that I actually do have a slide control and there's only one slide control here and these other options right here are disabled so we don't see the dots down at the bottom. Pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and, and remove this one right here and just show this to you real quick. Now as you can see right here all these additional metadata fields will be displayed once this slide becomes active. Now let me jump back over here real quick and I want to show you this. Normally when you open up the Content Management Star Solution these slides right here are all grouped together. That means you can't grab one element and move it all over the place. That also means that if you click on this slide right here and you look at your inspector you actually can't see the criteria for which this one slide panel is visible. To correct this we're going to go ahead and click on the single slide panel say ungroup that breaks everything apart then we can click on the slide panel itself and not the items inside of it once again that's part of the strategy we want everything inside of it not to have to have its own hidden calculation now I see right here that the calculation looks like it only is taking into account the window mode which is the browse mode versus find mode but that would be a mistake because there's actually a bunch more calculation in here we need to press the specify button right here and actually take a look at the calculation. So it's hidden if we're in find mode or if the container is empty or if the content management kind is not equal to photo. Otherwise it's visible. The same sorts of calculations exist for each of these different individual slide panels right here. They're all taking their cue from this field right here called kind. And that brings up an interesting point, kind, which is actually using this function right here, the container attribute, to determine the kind of container document that we're looking at. Now, If you don't feel like writing your own calculation, of course feel free to recycle this calculation. It's written with a let function and a case statement, but it should be pretty straightforward for you to review this and to figure out what's going on. That being said, there is an important subtlety that's going on here and Nick Hunter wanted me to make sure that I pointed this out. Why is this field called kind right here not defined as a calculation field but instead defined as a text field with an auto enter calculation instead? Well let's talk about this for a second. An auto enter calculation will calculate only at the time a new record is created and or it'll calculate once when one of the reference fields is updated. So to be clear this calculation will refire and update itself if the field file container is changed i.e. a new document is dragged on it. That's how auto enter options work. Either they trigger immediately at the time a record is created or by using this option right here they can trigger if one of the reference fields is changed at some point in the future. But it only calculates once and only at the time that that field is changed. Why is this important? Well there's a really good reason for this. The metadata that the git container attribute is looking for is stored all throughout these files. If you have a real small 80k PDF or a very small Word document then the metadata is real quick, it's right there, it's easily accessible. But as we start to get 1 megabyte, 2 megabyte, 10 megabyte files, or what if you had a 100 megabyte video or even larger, that metadata is spread all throughout that file. And if you run the git container attribute function, it has to actually parse the entire file byte by byte looking for the metadata. Now if you have a small file you'll never see this problem but if you have a big file or if you have a lot of files and you're accessing them across a wide area network from a FileMaker server this could cause a serious performance penalty. This process right here causes these calculations to trigger once and then save their values. They trigger once because you save the value into the field called file container 
then all the auto enter calculations fire. These could be calculation fields, but if they were calculation fields, then they would frequently recalculate automatically simply by flipping records. If you're in the database across a wide area network and you're simply flipping records, would you want a big delay while it has to parse apart and dig through the file to bring back all the little bits of data like you see down here? The performance on this file is almost instantaneous because all this metadata is pre-cached and ready for action. FileMaker doesn't have to hunt through the file looking for the metadata. It's already been dug out of the file and saved into separate fields. So that's a pretty cool performance tip right there. And it's very subtle. Now once again, just keep in mind this solution has been optimized for desktop solutions, iPad solutions, iPhone solutions, and web. And of course when we see web, we're talking about WebDirect on a browser. Now of course there's all sorts of other little capabilities that you can look at and tear apart in this FileMaker solution. You've got filtering capabilities that you can look at. You've got additional script trigger capabilities that you can look at. Never mind the basic user interface capabilities. But we wanted to point out the idea of stacking lots of content over a confined space with tabs that are hanging off the side of the screen using single slide panels. And just keep in mind, only one of these is ever visible at one time. In fact, to be clear, there's actually a base panel that's underneath all these. So if I delete all of them, there's still this base display right here, which is almost like a base panel that's underneath. It's not a panel, of course. It's just stuck right on the base layout. But I would almost be inclined, if I was building the solution, to glue this into its own base slide panel so you could actually see it displayed off the side of the screen on the right side. Now, of course, keep in mind, once again, when we go back into browse mode, you never see any of that area that's off the right side of the screen. That screen is only visible when in layout mode. So once again, this is a very cool developer option. It's something the end users never see. Now to be clear, there are a tremendous number of attributes that can be brought back with that get container attribute function. I mean, the list is really long, as you can see here. In fact, one of the tips that you can do to bring all these back if you forget some of them, is you can go here to the data viewer, you can go to watch, I can add, get container attribute, I can specify file container and attribute all. And that will bring back all the available attributes for that type of container. So if I look right here, for the record that we have on screen right here, we see that when I said all, it brought back, of course, the file name, which will be kind of universal to all the types, but it'll also show us file size, internal file size. Then it gets into some things that are specific to images or photos. Height, width, DPI, transparency, data was created, that type of thing. If the camera that took the picture logged a latitude and longitude, that's stuck in as metadata and it's also accessible via FileMaker. That can be pretty handy because then what they did in this solution is they actually tap into it right here. We took this picture in our Santa Clara office. I can press the button right here. It actually brings up the Google Map coordinates to our office in Santa Clara, California. Pretty slick. So as you can tell, the data viewer is pretty handy. I'm going to bring this down here. I'll flip over here to records. I'm going to flip forward. Now, of course, we have a PDF. I can double click this. I see the same general metadata at the top, which includes file size, things like that. But then we have a limited set of information here on the PDF. Of course, that's with this PDF. Other PDFs might have additional information. Let's try out the FileMaker PDF and see what it has. Well, I'm looking at the FileMaker file, and this is all the metadata that file has as well. Interesting. Let's jump again. Now here's our musical MP3. If we had a movie file, you'd have something similar to this. I'm going to go ahead and double click that. We have our standard information, our file size, that type of thing. But then we have the fact that we have the title, artist, album, all that kind of information right here. Pretty slick. 
finally, we have a Word document right here. Let's see what kind of information we get on our Word document. We have the file size as usual. And we don't have any additional information right there. So just keep in mind, with Word documents, we don't necessarily get any additional metadata. But we do definitely get file name and file size, which can be very handy. Well, hopefully that gives you an idea of the content management solution. We're not covering every little function or feature of this solution, just some of the more clever or esoteric capabilities, things that are not so obvious that you might need a little bit of direction on in learning how they operate. Now, of course, if you're completely confused by this whole conversation, feel free to check out our FileMaker Pro or FileMaker Go video training courses that we have available. Those courses are specifically designed for both beginner and intermediate FileMaker users and developers. So if you're learning the FileMaker platform or you're trying to become more of an intermediate to advanced developer, you might want to think about taking a look at these video courses to speed your learning of this exciting platform. Thank you.